from San Jose, California, it's The Cube, covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live in Silicon Valley for the Big The Cube coverage. I'm John Furrier, Wikibon analyst, George Gilbert. We said have Bruno Aziza, who's on the CMO of At Scale, Cube alumni, and Josh Klar, VP of product at At Scale. Welcome to the Cube. Thank welcome you. back. Thank Bruno, you great to you. see you. You look great, you're smiling as always. Business is good. Business Give us the update great. on one Netscape. What's up? Since we last saw you in New well, York. Well, thanks for for having us. First of all, and yeah, business is great. We I think last time I was here on the cube, we talked about the Hadoop Maturity Survey, and at the time we just launched a company. And so now you look about a year out, and we've grown about 10x. We have uh, large enterprises across just about any vertical you can think of. You know, uh, financial services, you know, American Express, uh, healthcare. I think about Aetna, Cigna, GSK retail, Home Depot, Macy's, and so forth. And we've also done a lot of, uh, of work with our partner ecosystem, so Hortonworks, uh, OEMs, uh, at scale technology, which is a great way for us to, to get to large scale across the US, but also inter internationally. And then our customers are getting recognized for the work that they're doing with at scale. So last year, for instance, uh, Yellow Pages got recognized by Cloudera on the leadership award, and Macy's got a leadership award as well. So uh, things are, are going uh, the, the right trajectory, and I think we're also benefiting from the fact that the industry is changing, it's maturing on the big data side, but also there's a redefinition of, of what business intelligence means. Uh, this idea that you can have analytics on large scale data without having to change your visualization tools and make that work with the existing stack you have in place. And I think that's been helping us in growing How did you guys do it? I mean, uh, you know, we've talked many times and there's some secret sauce there, but at the time when you guys were first starting, it was kind of crowded field, right? Yeah. And all these BI tools were out there. You had front end BI tools, yeah. but everyone was still separate from the whole batch back end. So what did you guys do to, to, to break out? So there's two key uh, differentiators with that scale. The first one is, we are the only uh, platform that does not have a visualization uh, tool. And so people think about this as that's a bug, yeah. but it's actually a feature because most enterprises have already bets they've made with traditional uh, BI tools. And so our ability to uh, talk to MDX and SQL uh, types BI tools uh, without any changes is, is a big differentiator. And then the other piece of our technology, this idea that you can get the speed, the scale, and security on large data sets without having to move the data is a big differentiation for enterprises to get value out of the data they already have in Hadoop, as well as non-Hadoop systems, which we cover. Josh, you're the VP of products, so you have the roadmap. Just give us a peek into what's happening with the current product. And where's the, where's the work areas? Where are you guys going? What are you guys, what's the, the do list? Where's the checkbox? And what's the innovation coming around the corner? Yeah, I think, I mean, to follow up on what Bruno said about kind of how we hit the, the sweet spot, I think we made a strategic choice, which is we don't want to be in the business of trying to beat Tableau or Excel uh, or be a better front end. Um, and there's so much diversity on the back end. If you look at the ecosystem right now, whether it's Spark SQL or Hive or Presto, uh, or even new cloud-based systems, mm -hmm. uh, the sweet spot is really how do you fit into those ecosystems and support the right level of BI uh, on top of those applications. Uh, so what we're looking at from a, a roadmap perspective is how do we expand and support the back end data platforms that customers are asking about? Uh, I think we saw a big white space in BI on Hadoop in particular, and that's, you know, we've really, I'd say, we've nailed it over the past year and a half. Uh, but we see customers now, they're asking us about uh, Google BigQuery. They're asking us about Athena. Yeah. Uh, th I think these serverless data platforms are really, really compelling. Um, they're going to take a, a while to get adoption, but I, that, so that's a big investment area for us. Uh, and then in terms of supporting BI front ends, we're, we're kind of uh, doubling down on making sure our Tableau integration is great. Yeah. Uh, Power BI uh, is, uh, I think, getting yeah. really big traction. Well, two great, two great products. You got Microsoft and Tableau leaders in that area. Yeah, right? they're really, I, like the, the self-service BI revolution has, has, I would say, has won. Uh, and the business user wants the, their tool of choice. Uh, where we come in is, the, the folks responsible for data platforms on the back end, they want some level of control and consistency. And so they're trying to figure out wh where do you draw the line? Where do you provide standards? Where do you provide governance? Right. And where do you let the business loose? All right, so Bruno and Josh, I want you guys to answer the questions. Be a good, good, good uh, quiz. 
Sure. So define next generation BI platforms from a functional standpoint and then under the hood. Yeah, um, well there's a few things you can look at. I think if, if you were at the Gartner BI conference last week, you saw that there's 24 vendors in the Magic Quadrant. And, and I think in general, people are now realizing that this, this is a space that's extremely crowded. And it's also sitting on technology that was built 20 years ago. Uh, now when you, took to, when you talk to enterprises like the ones that we work with, like as I named earlier, you realize that they all have multiple BI tools. So the visualization war, if you will, kind of has been set up and, and almost won by Microsoft and Tableau at this point. Uh, and the average enterprise is 15 different BI tools. So clearly if you're trying to innovate on the visualization side, uh, I would say you're going to have a very hard time. Uh, so you're dealing with that level of complexity. And then at the back end standpoint, you're now having to deal with database from the past, that's the Teradata of this world, data sources from today, Hadoop, and data sources from the future, like Google BigQuery. And so I think the the, the CIO's answer of what is the next gen BI platform I want is something that is enabling me to simplify this very complex world. I have lots of BI tools, lots of data. How can I standardize in the middle in order to, to uh, provide security, provide scale, provide speed to my business users? Uh, and um, you know, that's really radically going to change the space, I think. If you're trying to sell a full stack that's integrated from the bottom all the way to visualization, I don't think that's what enterprises want anymore. Josh, under the hood, what's the next generation you know, key levers in, on, for the tech and just uh, the enabler? Yeah, so I, for me, the, the end state for the next generation BI platform is um, a user can log in, they can point to their data, wherever that data is, it's on-prem, it's in the cloud, um, it's in a relational database, it's a flat file. Uh, they can design their business model, and that's, we, we spend a lot of time making sure we can support the creation of uh, business models, what are the key metrics, what are the hierarchies, what are the measures? It may sound like I'm talking about OLAP. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's what our history is steeped in. Well, but faster data is coming. I mean, that's yeah. streaming and Dash coming together. So I should be able to just point at those data sets and turn around and be able to analyze it immediately. On the back end, that means we need to have uh, pretty robust modeling capabilities so that you can define those complex metrics so you can functionally do what are traditional uh, business analytics, period over period comparisons, rolling averages, um, navigate up and down business hierarchies. Uh, the optimization should be built in. It shouldn't be the responsibility of the designer to fi figure out, do I need to create indices? Do I need to create aggregates? Do I need to create summarization? That should all be handled for you automatically. Shouldn't think about data movement. And so that's really what we've built in from an, from an ad scale perspective on the back end point to data, we're smart about creating optimal data structures so you get fast performance, uh, and then you should be able to connect whatever BI tool you want. Uh, you should be able to connect Excel, we can talk the MDX query language, uh, we can talk SQL, we can talk DAX, wh whatever language you want so to talk to. So take the syntax out of the hands of the user, yeah. Yeah. and getting in, in the weeds on that stuff. Make it easier for them exactly. to get to and the... And the key word, I think, for the future of BI is open, right? We've, we've been buying tools over the last 20 what years. What do you mean by that? Explain. Open means that you can choose whatever BI tool you want, and you can choose whatever data you want. As in a business user, there's no real compromise. But because you're getting an open platform, it doesn't mean that you have to trade off complexity. I think some of the stuff that Just was talking about, you know, period over period analysis, the type of multi-dimensional analysis that you need, uh, you know, calendar analysis, you know, historical uh, data, that's still going to be needed, but you're going to need to provide this in a world where the business user and the IT organization expects that the tools they buy is going to be open to the, the rest of the ecosystem. And that's new, I think. George, you want to get a question in edgewise? Come on. <laughs> 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 you know, my, my I've been uh, sort of a single issue candidate, uh, I guess this week, on, on machine learning and how it's sort of touching all the different sectors. And I'm wondering, are you, um, how do you see yourselves as part of a, a broader pipeline, you know, of different users adding different types of value to data? Yeah, I think maybe there, on the machine learning topic, there's a few different ways to look at it. The first is uh, we do s use machine learning in our own product. Uh, I talked about this concept of auto optimization. One of the things that AdScale does is it looks at end user query patterns. And we look at those query patterns and try to figure out how can we be smart about anticipating the next thing they're going to ask so we can pre-index or pre-materialize that data. Yeah. So there's kind of machine learning in the context of making AdScale a better product. 
Um, reusing, reusing things that are already done. That's been the whole yeah. machine learning yes. demos we saw at Google Next with the with the vid video editing I and mean the video recognition stuff. And that's been exactly. a huge part of yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's you've got users giving you signals. Take that information and and yeah. be smart with it. Uh, I think in terms of the the customer workflow, uh, Comcast, for example, a customer of ours. Um, we are in a data discovery phase. There's a data science group that looks at all of their set-top box data, and they're trying to make pat discover programming uh, patterns. You know, who uses the Yankees network, for example. And where they use at scale is uh, what I would call a descriptive element, uh, where they're trying to figure out what are the key measures and trends and what are the attributes that contribute to that. And then they'll go in and they'll use machine learning to tools on top of that same data set to come up with predictive algorithms. So just to be clear, they're, they're hypothesizing about, let's like, say, a, either the pattern of users that might be um, have an affinity for a certain channel or channels, or they're, they're looking for pathways? Yes, yeah, and, I, and I'd say our role in that right now is a, is a descriptive role. We're supporting okay. the descriptive element of that analytics lifecycle. Mm -hmm. I think over time, our customers are going to push us to to build in more of our own capabilities when it comes to, okay, I discovered something descriptive, can you come up with a model that helps me predict it the next time around? Uh, honestly, right now people want BI. Yeah. People want very traditional BI on the next generation data platform. Just continuing on that theme, um, leaving um, machine learning aside, I guess, um, as I understand it, like when we talked about like the old school vendors, um, Teradata, um, when they wanted to support data scientists, they they grafted on some machine learning, like a parallel version of R in the core data ter Teradata engine. They also bought Astrodata, which was you know for a different audience. Yep. Um, and so I guess my question is, will you uh, will we see from you ultimately like a separate product line to support a new class of users, or are you thinking about new functionality that gets integrated into the core product? I think it's more the latter. Um, so the way that we view it, uh, and this is really looking at, like like I said, what people are asking for today is kind of the basic traditional BI. What we're building is essentially a, a business model. So when someone uses AtScale, they're designing and they're telling us, they're asserting, these are the things that I'm interested in measuring, and these are the attributes that I think might contribute to it. And so that puts us in a pretty good position to start using, whether it's Spark on the back end or built-in machine learning algorithms on the Hadoop cluster, um, let's start using our knowledge of that business model to help make predictions on behalf of the customer. So uh, just then a follow-up, and then this really sort of leaves out the machine learning part, which is it sounds like we went, um, in terms of uh, with, with big data, we were first an archive that supported more data sort of retention than we could do affordably with the, with the um, data warehouse. Then we did the ETL offload, and now we're doing more and more of the visualization, the ad hoc That's stuff. exactly right. So what, what in, in a couple of years' time, what remains in the classic data warehouse and what's in the Hadoop um, category? Well, so there is, you know, I think what you're describing is, is the pure evolution of, you know, any technology where you start with the infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been in this for over 10 years. Now you've got Cloudera going IPO and then going into the data science workbench. That's I not official yet. I think we read about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least they filed. Um, but, but I think the direction is showing, you know, now people are relying on the platform, the Hadoop platform, uh, in order to build applications on top of it. Uh, and so I think just like Josh is saying, the mainstream application on top of a database, and I think this is true for non-Hadoop systems as well, is always going to be analytics. Of course, data science is something that provides a lot of value, but it typically provides a lot of uh, value to a few uh, <laughs> set of people that will then uh, scale it out to the rest of the organization. I think if you now project out to what does this mean for the CIO and their environment, I don't think any of these platforms, Teradata or Hadoop or Google or Amazon or any of those, I don't think do 100% replace. And I think that's where it becomes interesting because you now ha are having to deal with a heterogeneous environment where the business user is at. You know, they're using Excel, they're using the standard ad application, they might be using some the result of, of machine learning models, but they're also having to uh, deal with a heterogeneous environment at the data level. Hadoop on-prem, Hadoop in the cloud, non-Hadoop in the cloud, and non-Hadoop on-prem. Uh, and uh, that's, of course, that's a market that I think is very interesting for us as a simplification platform for that world. I think you guys are really thinking about it in a new way, and I think that's kind of great modern 
approach. Yeah. Let the freedom, and by the way, a quick question on the Microsoft tool and Tableau. What percentage share do you think they are of the market? 50? Uh, you, mean <coughs> you mentioned those were the two top ones. Yeah, I mentioned are them because in, in the if you look at the Magic Quadrant, clearly you know Microsoft and pa uh, Power BI and, and Tableau have really yeah. kind of shot up all the way to the right. Because it's easy to use, I mean, uh, basically, and it's easy to work yeah. with data. I, th I think so. I think, you know, look, I think from a functionality standpoint, you see Tableau's done a very good job on the visualization side. I think from a business standpoint, and a business model execution, you know, and I can talk from my days at Microsoft, yeah. it's a very great distribution model to get thousands and thousands of users to use Power BI. Now the guys that we didn't talk about in the la last Magic Quadrant, people like Google Data Studio or Amazon QuickSight, and I think that will change the yeah. ecosystem as well, which again is great news more for us. More muscle coming in. For you That's guys, right. just more rising tide floats all boats That's for you right. guys. So you guys are powering it with That's the right. modern, modern BI, I'd be safe to say. That's the idea. The idea is that the, the visualization is, is basically commoditized at this point, and what business users want and what enterprise um, you know, leaders want is uh, the ability to provide freedom and openness to their business users and never have to com compromise uh, safety, you know, security, speed, and also the complexity of those models, yeah. which is what we, we are in the business Get people of. work and get people more productive faster. In whatever tool they yeah. want. All right, Bruno, thanks so much. Thanks for coming on at scale. Modern BI here in theCUBE, breaking it down. This is uh, theCUBE covering big data SV Strata Dupe. Back with more coverage after this short break.